All right, we would like to welcome back Sinjin. Sinjin is a developer of AI-powered autonomous driving solutions for industrial applications. With me today from Sinjin is Ben Landon, Vice President of Business Development. Nice to see you, Ben. And good to see you again. All right, so since the last time Sinjin was at our event in early September, I believe, I see you've announced several new patents. So tell us about these and significance of them. We've been pretty active in the patent sphere. So we had our 15th patent uh, recently awarded. We've got another 10 that are submitted and in process. But I think more important than the patent themselves is to the patents themselves is to focus on uh, what kind of what is the theme of these patents. So uh, for us, we've been talking about this for years. We we started by developing these solutions on uh, the city streets riding the coattails of the really big players like the the Waymos and the cruises of the world, building the system in a similar way, uh, collecting a lot of real world data uh, so that we can then have uh, really high ceiling, very performant vehicles that we put into easier spaces, that we put into manufacturing facilities and warehouses. And what that lets you do is uh, to, to be a more software centric autonomous technology provider. And we believe that that's, that's pivotal to serving these industrial applications because they have so many different types of vehicles and uh, they want one type of training for their employees. They want uh, to, to work with one uh, customer or one vendor, excuse me, that they really trust. And so if you look at our patents, they really focus on that transferability of autonomous technology across vehicle types. Uh, leveraging data, both simulated and real-time collected data from sensors to improve driving capability and to be able to do it over many of these different types of vehicles, which fast forward a few years down the road, lets us offer an enterprise customer a portfolio of different engine-powered autonomous vehicles that feel the same for them to use and don't incur additional marginal costs when they go to their second or their third or their fourth. So that's that's really what underpins this this patent focus of ours is is empowering that. Great, congrats on that. Uh, you also recently announced a new customer, a Fortune 100 heavy equipment manufacturer, in late July, and it appears that last month you began deploying your autonomous driving solutions in one of their North American facilities. So, tell me the types of vehicles deployed and more of the long term opportunity with this customer. Yeah, the. The opportunity is is exciting and significant. I, I hope that that uh, can be taken away from the fact that it's a Fortune 100 company. Uh, with a little more detail, uh, they've got over 50 manufacturing facilities. Uh, the one that we are operating at has produced over 1 million machines since it opened. Uh, so just to give an idea of the of the scale that we're talking here, I can't, uh, this is where it's it's a little frustrating sometimes, I can't divulge that much more because as you might imagine, adopting automated solutions into this scale of a customer is really seen as a strong competitive edge. So we're often not given the green light by these big logos to mention them by name until we're farther along in the process and they feel that they've established a leadership position with some of their autonomy adoption. Uh, but we did officially go live with our drive mod stock chasers at their facility last month. So we're now we're now running vehicles there autonomously. We're pulling cargo around this massive facility that's producing hundreds of vehicles per day. And uh, so we're, we're looking forward to growing both within that facility over the coming months and then growing across the facilities of this customer over the coming months and years, really. And Aroco appears to be one of your early announced customers deploying Sinjin solutions. So how and where is Aroco deploying your autonomous vehicles? Arocco is a perfect example of a customer that's later on in that customer journey. So we worked with Arocco for roughly a year with, again, without being allowed to mention them by name, uh, because we, we started our collaboration and them identifying the value in electrifying and automating, particularly their forklift fleet, which is a substantial fleet of, of vehicles. And so we began to work together because they didn't have a solution on the market. We worked together for a year. We produced some, uh, frankly, amazing results. It was an area that really made me proud of our engineering team and what we were able to do that stem from proprietary computer vision algorithms 
that we built so that we could detect the pallet stack attributes of these large bundles of wood in Araco's case, which are basically they don't use standard pallets, uh, which, which created a computer vision challenge, let alone moving these several thousand pound loads autonomously with a forklift. So after we worked with them for a year, they saw the success, they felt they were out ahead and were comfortable in starting to tell the world the, the cutting edge work that we were doing. That was when they placed a pre-order with us for a hundred of the drive mod forklifts. Uh, roughly speaking, that equates to about a $5 million annual recurring revenue opportunity for us and is only a small fraction of their fleet of forklifts. And it goes to show you uh, the progress that we make and sort of the milestones that we hit with these very large customers until they say, hey, now, now we're ready to tell the world uh, about this exciting cutting edge work that we've been doing. And that's, uh, that's shaped up to, to be a first deployment that's going to be in their Bennettsville, North Carolina facility. Uh, we're targeting 2024 for the forklifts. And we're, we're happy to have started some discussions as to uh, where they might be able to use our commercially released other products as well, uh, like the, the drive mod stock chaser and, and tugger that's coming soon to pull some goods around the facility instead of just lifting goods around the facility. So really great example of what I, I hope to be able to share about that Fortune 100 customer that I can't name today. Fantastic. Um, so also earlier this week, Sinjin declared a dividend of common stock. So who would be the beneficiaries of this dividend? So that, that's right. Our board of directors uh, this week approved a 10% pro rata dividend. So simply stated, uh, anybody who is holding shares of Sinjin on the uh, record date will be uh, receiving one share for every 10 shares. Uh, the dividend will be paid on the distribution date of October 30th after that record date of October 23rd. And it's really you know, our, our attempt to uh, create some additional value for our shareholders in this uh, tumultuous stock market where we, we look forward to, to future growth and starting to capture some of that value uh, with our shareholders as soon as possible. I also see on the calendar that Sinjin will attend the American Automotive Summit at the end of October. So what is this summit all about and what attendees can expect to see at your Sinjin booth? It's a it's a big summit. There's a lot of great attendees. I come from the automotive industry myself, so it's a, a little bit of a kind of passion area for me, having worked with most of these companies as customers and partners in the past. But I think what encapsulates it is the very first bullet on the website in the key themes is, I'm quoting it here, leveraging automation, robotics, and digitization in automotive manufacturing. Like, if that does not better describe mm -hmm. what it is that we are working on, uh, then I don't know what does. So that that was very exciting to see. I mean, we see it in our in our customer conversations, the the focus, the the adoption, uh, willingness for for automation and digitization within automotive manufacturing, which is one of the best areas that we've been getting traction in because of its scale, uh, because of the heavy material that they move around. It's really shaping up to be one of our sweet spots. So with that considered, we're really looking at this at this conference as uh, just one of the many efforts that we take in our sales efforts, which we've really focused on in 2023. We've expanded the sales and business development team significantly. Uh, we're really uh, working on filling the, the pipeline, shortening the sales cycle in these industrial cycles. And this is just a great venue to, uh, to be there to make sure the automotive OEMs and the tier ones uh, will have uh, We'll see videos of our various vehicles running autonomously, uh, which we've now done in a variety of different geographies, and just making sure that they know who we are, uh, because we are really finding a sweet spot there, and we want to get into more and more of those uh, requests for quotes, those RFQs that we know uh, the automotive manufacturing industry is, is really uh, starting to lean into, uh, especially with that key theme considered for adoption of robotics and automation. Perfect. Makes sense to me. Um, we might have time for a few questions. Uh, Jim Larson sure. wants you to explain the revenue model. Is there a recurring service involved? Yeah, it is very simply stated. It's a subscription-based model. So when a customer buys a vehicle, 
uh, they are buying the the vehicle running autonomously for some usually pre-negotiated period of time. So we don't run it like a like a month by month like you would your your Netflix account, for example, because the the bring up and take down is is more involved than that. So we'll typically contract at the beginning to say you know based on an X dollar per month cost, which is determined by the vehicle, the geography, the utilization, the volume, kind of standard pricing inputs. Uh, we provide a price which covers that vehicle running autonomously and us supporting the, the standard autonomous operation over that period. And then as usual with, with any sort of customer uh, contract, customizations, special requests, uh, maintenance and support uh, might be additional revenue streams that are tacked onto that base subscription model. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for this update and congratulations on uh, this progress moving forward. We look forward to having you again in the future. Thanks, Anna. I look forward to being here again. Appreciate All it. Right. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back.